If you follow along with this video until the very end, you're gonna walk away with your very own Facebook ads report that you can start sharing with your team right away. And as a bonus, you can also get your own slide deck and you can grab our template in the description, copy it, use it for your own ad creative reporting, and you can grab it right now if you wanna follow along. Also for this video, I'll show you how to build a few different reports inside of Motion, but these can also be created in virtually any ad reporting tool, even if you're just using spreadsheets from Meta. Just screen grab your spreadsheets and ad creative and toss them into the slide deck and you should be good to go. If you'd like to follow along using Motion, you can start a free trial or get a demo with the links that are in the description as well. All right, let's dive into these reports. Most media buyers begin by reporting on their account's top performers. So the first step is if you're inside of Meta Ads Manager, you can go ahead and just export that campaign or ad set that you're working on with a one week view that is stack ranked by spend and then ROAS. You can drag and drop maybe some screenshots of the creatives that are connected to those top performers and then place them in your slide deck. Inside of Motion, this report comes ready for you to use out of the box once you connect your meta account. And we also like looking at these top performers from three different views, especially when we're sharing it with team members or clients outside of these spreadsheets. The first view is a bar chart that shows off your primary metrics. So here you can see spend and ROAS, but you can adjust those for the KPIs you care most about. The next view we like is the line chart view with the same metrics, but the difference here is that you're using this view really to spot any trends that might be happening over time. And lastly, is this card view. This is my favorite one because you can attach more metrics that tell a deeper story about this ad creative. You can add things like thumb stop, CTR, purchase value, or any of the other metrics you think are important. And look, whether you're using Motion, some spreadsheets, or some other tool, we recommend always starting your report with this week's top performers. Then you should break it out by the week's video top performers and the week's static top performers. And then for extra measure, you can report on the top landing pages and the top copy to identify key themes and next steps that you might want to take. Okay, step two, is reporting on your ads with a deep dive into specific creatives. Most media buyers usually want to look at top performers so they can replicate that ad success. So in this case, we'll grab a card view where your team can see the actual creative, the name of the ad, and then the key metrics like spend and ROAS below it. Next to that, we'll share some deeper insights like video plays and impression data across gender and age. All of those data are easily viewable inside of Motion under this Creative Insights tab. But if you're inside of Meta, just click into the ad from the campaign you're monitoring, adjust the time frame, and screen grab your view preview as well as the demographic section after you've filtered by impressions. Then drop all of that into your slide deck and you're good to go. On these slides, it's really a good idea to include your hypothesis on what's helping this creative perform so well. You can try to answer questions like, is this ad reaching the right audience? Is this video keeping people viewing as long as we want them to? Are they dropping off sooner than they expected? Lastly, you'll want to add in your next steps and notes on this ad as well. You can follow this exact same process for ads that have iteration opportunities or ads that you want to consider scaling or maybe some ads that you want to consider pausing. Step three is reporting on higher level trends. An important slide to have in your reporting deck is definitely going to be a funnel analysis slide that looks like this. And basically it's looking at both spend and ROAS on creative that's targeted towards different stages of the funnel. So for example, what I mean by that is maybe you have a retargeting campaign and a prospecting campaign for new customers. Screen grab the spend and ROAS for both of those over the last week so you can see where you might need to adjust by creating more ads for one of those campaigns. This just helps you and your team step back, see the bigger picture of where your money is going towards and where your sales are coming from. Inside Motion, we'll create this report by building a comparative analysis report where we're able to easily group these by campaign name. So in this example, we can see a breakdown of spend, ROAS, and the number of ads in each funnel stage. And this is nice because the team can now understand where there might be imbalances or over or underperforming in different audience segments. These higher level reports can be a little trickier to do inside of Meta Ads Manager but you can probably pull the data into a CSV from your campaigns and then transform them into some bar charts inside of Google Sheets or Excel, then screen grab those charts, drop them into your slide deck, and you know, the best part about Motion is it just does all of that for you, but you can totally do that yourself if you don't have a tool like Motion. The other three higher level trend reports that we recommend having in your weekly reports are ad format comparison, product or SKU performance, and creator performance. These are all built using Motion's comparative analysis report, which we just just looked at, and you're able to compare multiple sets of creatives against one another based on naming conventions across campaigns, ad sets, ads, ad setups, landing pages, or other naming convention properties and tags. Here's how those three reports should look like once they're inside your slide deck. Well, there you have it. Did you build those 10 to 15 slides with me? You can go back, pause, and create your slides alongside with me, and hopefully you're on your way to giving yourself and your team a proper Facebook ad performance report, and your team can ship more winning ads.
I hope this helps. And if you'd like to dive deeper into something like naming conventions so you can make these reports work a lot faster and easier, you want to watch this video here. And if you found this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe. Drop your comments with any questions you have, and we'll try our best to answer them. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.